United States Navy, the floating forts of America's first line of defense. From the Atlantic to the Pacific, wherever extends our interest or influence, from Pearl Harbor to Panama, from Nome to Norfolk, from Guam to Guantanamo, wherever our flag waves over water, there our fighting fleet is prepared to go. But preparation takes practice. So periodically, the various units of our naval forces engage in tactical maneuvers. Designed to accustom crew and craft to any emergency, these exercises simulate actual combat conditions. Every man must be trained to instant action, and every ship from keel to fighting top geared to battle trim. No one knows if or when or where an emergency might arise. But over a century and a half of glorious tradition have pledged the Navy to constant preparedness. So as the fleet takes to the seaway for maneuvers, they're out to show the world that they are fit to fight. En route to the war games, the fleet is in battle order. In the vanguard, the destroyers, sleek, swift, relentless, keep watch for submarines or enemy service craft. As advanced scouts or convoy vessels, it is their duty to act as feelers for the fleet, the backbone of which has always been the battleship. America's super dreadnoughts, a gray iron bulwark for defense of our homeland. Eyes of the fleet are its aircraft. Launched from the deck of the larger ships, seaplanes perform invaluable reconnaissance work and are especially useful for detecting submarines, which, when submerged below periscope depth, are visible only from great height. A catapult launches these planes from a space little more than their own length. Washing their bows with white water, the destroyers plow ahead to contact the mythical foe. It will be their duty in today's maneuvers to harass the enemy and divert their fire so that the heavier and more versatile cruisers can engage them in actual battle. They must pave the way for the arrival of slower ships with superior armor and firepower. The destroyers are the shock troops of the sea. On they steam, a pencil mark on the Admiral's chart marks their destination. But American science and seamanship makes the difference between sailing on paper and on water. Submarine sighted, and down the chute go the deadly depth bombs. Because the underwater detonation might spring her own hull plates, the boat has to pile on plenty of knots and leave the ash cans far in her wake before their timing device explodes them. But zero hour approaches. From every quarter of the battle area, America's fighting craft prepare for action. Here, textbook strategy will be put to the test. On the bridge, every officer waits for the signal that will throw him into action. Radio communication is silenced to prevent the interception of messages. And up the halyard through the yard arm, flutters the flag signal that starts the exercise. A few square yards of bunting have set into action the most complicated mechanism ever devised by man. The commander of each ship has previously been acquainted with his position in the battle order. His speed and course have been carefully plotted in advance. Here is no place for the reckless tactics of a privateer. Hollywood heroics would make these scientifically planned maneuvers Nothing but a futile and expensive excursion trip. Indeed, any deviation from orders might mean disaster. For the battle honors are slight to the ship caught in crossfire or collision. But whether a ship is allowed in the thick of action or not, officers and personnel are getting the vital exercise 
that marks the difference between a sailor and a man of warsman. There is an air of tenseness aboard every vessel as the intermittent shutters of powerful searchlights dot and dash last minute orders. Decks are cleared for action as the main line, the ponderous battleships, churn white water to bring their mammoth guns into position. and the call to general quarters. Maneuvers are no longer just figures on an admiral's chart. They are now the personal concern of every man aboard. On the double from every part of the ship, they scramble to their battle stations. To their turrets go the men who win battles, while special details trim the ship and get it in firing order. seconds all the way, the men of the deck crew hit their posts. Into the complicated meshwork of the fighting top go the men who, from a hidden fire control tower, will determine the range for the men in the turrets. The navigation of a battleship under combat conditions is a naval art in itself. But every ship is underway and waiting for the order that will send it into action. This is what every man in the fleet has been waiting for. Far below decks in the magazine, bags of powder are loaded onto the hoists. From the depths of the ship arrive hundreds of pounds of projectiles, which will soon be hurtling through the air. Precision born of rigid training, the turret crew loads its guns. The range is found, checked with the speed of the wind and the ship, and the signal is commence firing. is over. Hits and misses are checked and signaled to the various units. Fleet maneuvers. The safety of a nation put to the test. Today's exercises may have marked a page in that nation's history. What went on in these waters is more than merely lecture matter for Annapolis classrooms. It is the exercise that keeps supple the muscles of a mighty arm. The United States Navy, 
an iron wall around our Bill of Rights. From San Juan to San Diego, from Maine to Mindanao, from Ketchikan to Key West, wherever stars fly with stripes over water, there is an outpost of America's first line of defense.